Hi everybody, Doug here. Welcome back to yet another board game channel and um, the proper beginning of yet another game playthrough. We are doing Time Stories, the Asylum scenario. It is 1921. We are in the bodies of some people in an insane asylum and we're trying to find out what's going horribly wrong. We are in the day room. Uh, we're just going to uh, have our have our time agents spread out to do some investigating. Um, yes, Felix is going to go talk to the um, possibly talk to the strange gentleman with the horns coming out of his ears, whatever he's doing there. Uh, Eugene is going to. Uh, Go have a chat with the strange, creepy lady who is doing the painting. Uh, Marie is going to talk to the gentleman who gave us a little wave when we came in, try to get our attention. And Vasil is going to go chat with the nurse. He's the cocaine addict. Maybe he'll talk about his condition or something. <laughs> All right, so doing all of this does not take up any um, any time units. Um, the initial setup, or the yeah, the initial entering of the space and choosing where we go. Uh, we spend time units if we want to move between different bits um, of the uh, of the panorama, or uh, if we want to perform any tests. We'll see if any come up. I mostly don't remember. So we're going to go from left to right and see what we discover. Normally, when playing this with other people, you would turn it over, read it, put it face down, and then share with everybody uh, what you experienced without actually reading it literally. Because I'm playing solo, we'll just leave them face up for now. So, right, Vasil approaches the nurse. You're going to ask me the day's schedule again, are you? It's the same every day. For the moment, you can take advantage of the day room and of the promenade, then you'll head back to your dormitory at the end of the day. If you want to look for me later, I'll be in the infirmary. My name's Josephine. <laughs> She's slightly condescending. Uh, so, we're not really getting much out of that. I gather sometimes you should pay attention to the visuals, because there might be clues hidden in what's going on, although there's not much there, it's just a close-up of her. Yeah, we just zoomed in on that. Uh, next up, Felix is going to approach this fellow. As you come closer to the man, oh, wow, he is very odd. Uh, you hear him mutter, I might be crazy, but I won't let myself be taken. Once you're by his side, he begins to shout at you. They've taken the crazies, all of the crazies. They even said the bishops were crazy. Only the tears of the manticore could have saved them. They've taken the crazies. After looking at the board game, you realize that all of the bishops are missing. Okay, a little bit of ranting there. Goodness knows if that's important, that the bishops are missing. Uh, Eugene is going to approach the young lady frantically painting, and as you approach her, the strange, uh, the young lady becomes totally absorbed by her strange painting and pays no attention to you. Now here we've got a lot of stuff in her painting. Well, that's a horrible looking beastie that she's drawing. We've got some symbols here, plus, 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 minus. I think I can remember that in case it comes up. Uh, little bits of map, southeast, then clockwise. So. Well, try to keep that in mind. Southeast is an important direction, and moving clockwise after that is also important. 
Uh, Marie, going to approach the gentleman who waved to us. There we are. Do you know what I know you know? I am the only one who knows. I'm not crazy. They're the crazy ones. It's a conspiracy, and I know everything. And I know you're going to save us. Here, I managed to steal this from them. And it says we get to take item 24. So we grab the item deck here. All through to 24. And we have a key. A rather well-made key received from a patient in the day room. All right, so we'll um, put that in Marie's area. She'll hold on to the key for now. And yes, we uh, got a little bit done there. Now, we could spend a time unit to look at this last card, which I did not do at all when I <laughs> played this when I did a, a, a few test turns earlier. Heaven knows if there's anything important behind there. So I think we are going to go ahead and can we see the... We're going to move. We're going to spend a time unit. Maybe a waste of... Uh, a waste of time units, but I would like to see what's under there. So. Might as well have everybody move there, just in case it's a big, horrible test. So the movement costs the time unit. Just revealing the card it does not spend time. It's worked into it. So, day room. Yep. Oh, oh, we just get a close-up of the spot. And now there's suddenly a newspaper there, and it says, Take item 22. All right. I guess I should have decided who was doing that. No, I, I don't think it matters. I think we're kind of doing it as a group. Item 22, which is, oh, it is a newspaper. It's a clue. Le siècle, the Humbert Trial, Superior Court of the Seine District, first audience. The opening of a sensational case composition of the audience room, the entrance of the accused makes a splash, first interrogations, Mrs. Humbert claims the existence of her inheritances, she'll speak, she says, when it's time, Frederick Humbert denies his participation in the affair, he energetically defends his father's memory, the audience seemed to be rather as I seem to rather be entertained. The hearing is delayed until Monday. Relevance? Who knows? It could be a complete red herring. And the other article, The Crazies, oh, from Beauregard. It's now been over a week since five lunatics, inmates at the Beauregard Asylum, that would be where we are, have been declared missing. According to police, the investigations are ongoing, and the theory of an escape is probable. Okay, um, got to decide for somebody to hold on to that. Let's just say Vassal for no particular reason, because I don't think it's a usable item. Okay, so yes, somebody is, as uh, Mr. Trumpeteers was saying, like uh, they've stolen the crazies. So, uh, yes, a bunch of us have gone missing. That's ominous. All right, uh, well, we've done everything we can in this room. Um, so, I'll decide where we're going to move to or do next. All right, so what we can do is move our group, and we always have to stay together as a group. Uh, to another location. Uh, when we do so, we roll this die to see how much time we spend getting there, whether it's one, two, or three time units. Um, probably indicating some, some randomness that happens along the way, maybe bumping them into people. Uh, so, for no particularly good reason, <laughs> I'm going to you know what, because this 
it's a good way as good a way to go as anything because we don't know where to go uh, on the creepy painting it did say southeast then clockwise so let's go well yeah let's go southeast to the dormitory and then I'm gonna work my way around clockwise <laughs> Um, so let's see how much time that takes us. Two time units. So that's going to put us down to 22. And we will now set up the new location. Alright, I've uh, swept away the, the day room um, cards, put them on the bottom of the deck where we can retrieve them if we need to, if we go back, but we probably won't because we saw everything. Um, yeah, and put out the dormitory cards. We've got a couple of these special cards, so you can only go to these cards under special circumstances. You need to have the correct token in your possession. Um, when you do acquire them, you can put them on this little grid here so you remember which ones you have access to. Uh, so, we'll see what is up at the dormitory. After walking a few minutes down the asylum's corridors, you enter the dormitory. It's a large room, bordered by two rows of beds. At this time of day, only a few beds are occupied by apathetic patients who, between a few senseless mumbles let out discreet snores. To the left, a patron, a, pa a patron, a patient calls to you from his bed. At the back of the room, lockers uh, hold the personal belongings of the patients. To the right, through the windows, there we go, you glimpse the large park on the east side of the building. A closer look might allow you uh, to better scope out the surrounding areas. Okay, so who do we send where? Now, uh, Marie has that key. He could open up one of these, one of these lockers, so, uh, let's send her there. What else can we do? Uh, the... See, this person's actually calling to us. Um, I want to send somebody there with high glibness because there may be some chatting involved. So we'll send Eugene there because he's got a three. Um, made a mistake earlier. <laughs> I forgot that Eugene needs to be with somebody or we lose a time unit. Shoot. Uh, so we're actually down to 21. Yep, I shouldn't have left him alone. So we're not going to leave him alone this time. We're going to have, uh, let's say, Felix go with him. Yeah, I forgot because of his, uh, paralyzing delusion. Must be placed or moved to a space containing at least one agent. If you don't, the party loses one time unit. My bad. I forgot he had that going, uh, which is going to leave, uh, Vasil... He's going to go check out the uh, check out the window. See what's on the other side. So, all right, let's see what we have behind this card. The man chained to his bed grimaces and shouts, begging you to free him from his bonds. They're going to kill me. I don't want to die. I haven't done anything. I'm not crazy. Free me. No one will ever know about it. Please. Well, I doubt that nobody will ever know about it, but we can perform a test using our, um, what was it, deftness slash agility. And if we do, I uh, see, then we would immediately get to do this card. We don't actually collect the token for it or anything, we just reveal the card, because uh, it just says, yeah, immediately reveal it. All right, so um, what we're going to do for that, because there is a test there, we're going to put the appropriate tokens. It shows two blank shields, 
not that side, but this side. So we're going to put two blank shields there. And we might as well do it so we can see um, see what a test is like. Uh, Marie, Choop. you can break into multiple lockers at the back of the room. Okay, so the key is not helping. This is a normal deftness test. You can stop whenever you want, but the number of items between 2, 3, and 4 that you take depends on the number of remaining shields. So we set up 5 blank shields. I think card. Five. Oops, no, that's not a blank one. That has an icon on it. Okay. Five of these right there. And it is uh, uh, an agility deftness test. If you stop while well, two shields are left, randomly take one of these items. If we stop with one shield left, we randomly take two of those items. And if we stop after all the shields have been removed, we get to take all three. And yes, it just suggests shuffle two, three, and four under the table. So you don't know which ones you're getting. So I'll have to consider doing that. So it sounds like, well, what it is, the moment we stop spending time testing it, we... Um, we are stuck with whatever, with whatever results we've got. Um, and then, Vasil over at the window, you get closer to the window, admiring the view of the park. You spot a large greenhouse and see inside it an animal. A blink of the eye later, the beast is gone. A beast that looked like an enormous winged cat. Truth or hallucination? Now, seeing as how we're all a little bit deranged here, who knows? All right, so we just got to decide um, what tests we're going to do. Okay, we're going to spend one time unit to do some things. Leaves us with 20. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Eugene and Felix are going to... Um, Try to free the crazy man chained to the bed. This is probably not a wise thing to do, but we're going to do it anyway. So uh, each person, yeah, they still have to roll individually. Felix has one deftness and Eugene has three. We're going to have four dice total, but we um, still have to roll for each character separately because there might be... There's not, a, there's not a side effect in this case or anything. Nothing's going to backfire on us. But in case it, it did, if there was a possibility, we'd have to roll alone. So we'll do Eugene first because he's got, uh, he's got a three. So we're going to roll three dice for each one of these successes. So there's sometimes two, but you're more likely to get one or failure. We take away one of the shields moving from uh, left to right, because there can be different types of shields. So, Eugene got two. So, Felix doesn't even need to, so we're going to get rid of those shields. We have successfully done the test. And I believe that means this card goes away from this area and is replaced by this one because it's something that's happening in the same spot. Ah! That doesn't look good. Oh, and we're locked in place. Eugene could run if he wanted to. As soon as you free him, the man stares at you, then a disquieting grin twists his features. But, but, but it's you. It's you! You're my executioners! The ones who left me here to rot until I die! He rushes you, so we're gonna have to do a fight. Uh, but we'll have to wait until everybody else has moved because that will take another time unit. You can see it says we put three shields with the red skulls on them. These can um, work towards a possible counterattack. 
to hurt us. So we're just going to put that there. But everybody else, during the same time unit, has to do other uh, has to do their stuff. So uh, Marie is going to work on getting a couple of those shields clear as she um, tries to break open some of the lockers. She has a deftness, a deftness agility of two, so it's good. Okay, she got one, not useful one, but she got two. So we're going to take away two shields. That leaves us, uh, leaves us with three, which is not enough to get anything. So I think she's going to stay there and try again next turn. Uh, and that leaves uh, Vasil for his time unit spent. He's not going to be much help in the fight because he's only got one combat. So I'm going to move him there so that he uh, can help Marie with, um, with looting the lockers. So that means we are going to have to spend another time unit and engage in more tests. Okay, going to start with the easier test first, uh, the one that's more straightforward. And uh, Marie and Vasil are again going to try to rifle through these uh, these lockers. So we'll have Marie go first, rolling her two. Okay, she she got exactly the same roll, a skull, which doesn't help towards this, and two successes. So those go. And the seal will also. And he got a blank and two successes, so he's cleared that out. Which means we're going to get items two, three, and four. Okay, let's see what we got. So number two is a very complicated design. In the dormitory, we found a piece of paper with scribbled symbols. Here's the transcription. So, yeah, your your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um, let's see, does it matter who holds on to that? We'll say Marie for no particular reason. Number three is a ruby. A fake ruby found in the dormitory. Well, let's have Marie hold on to that, too. She seems like the type who would like a little bit of jewelry and uh oh yay a plunger a plunger to unclog toilets yes we know what plungers are for okay vessel can hold on to that if he really wants to okay so now we have to fight this guy we are still after successes we still want to roll these if we roll those that's kind of bad. Um, but we'll see in a moment how it works. <laughs> Going to start with Felix, who has three attack, and let's hope we don't get any blanks, because if we do, his stress goes up. Wow. Nice. We got four. That's enough to... Um, yeah, we get two, two. We get rid of them all. Felix just came in, wham, took him out with one punch. What would have happened if we hadn't gotten rid of all of the skulls on this, say we had one left, and we had rolled a skull there, um, they would have had a repost. Uh, what you do is you add up the remaining skulls, plus the skulls that are that you rolled, and then compare that number to your armor, or your defense. Like uh, Felix, for example, has three, so it would only be two, so he'd block it. Uh, if somebody only had one, it would get passed, and you'd have to take, you'd have to lose a life point. However, not an issue. Uh, he, um, he just wailed on him. So, that was uh, fairly successful. Um, we still have this over here that we weren't able to get to. We must pick that token up. 
somewhere else. Well, um, so yeah, these two are pretty much out of the game because this was replaced by this. And when you um, get rid of one of these, yeah, when you when you complete a test, in fact, this goes away too because we completed the test. The only thing left is that window that we could potentially go look at again. So, uh, well, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, actually, you know, let's go ahead and move into another location and we'll wrap up once we set it up. Alright, we're going to continue our clockwise journey. So we'll go around to the kitchen. We'll roll this to see how much... To oh, it took us three time units. It's not good. We're down to 16. Uh, going to run out of time to investigate. But let's uh, quickly set up the kitchen and we will call it an episode. Alright, the kitchen is a smaller location, only three parts in our panorama. After having wandered for some time, yeah, three, ti three time units worth of time, in the corridors, you reach a room next to an empty refect refectory. Ah, couldn't speak for a second. The kitchen. A rather unpleasant cabbagey smell fills this room, edged with work areas that are covered in pots, pans, and other cookware. To the left, a man in his fifties turns and begins to smile after he sees your group. Focus. By the back wall, two men are washing dishes and pay you no attention. In the far corner, a man and woman talk to one another in a low voice. So we will wrap it up there. Uh, I'll decide where to put everybody when we arrive and continue next time. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Thanks for subscribing and uh, liking the videos both on YouTube and Board Game Geek. It's appreciated. And we will see you next time for yet another episode of Time Stories Asylum. So long.